In Abacus, a geostatic step is a specialized analysis step designed for geotechnical simulations, commonly used in civil engineering to model the initial stress state in soils or other geological materials before any additional loading, construction, or excavation is applied. The primary purpose of a geostatic step is to establish equilibrium for the in-situ stresses, example stresses due to self-weight and initial confining pressures, based on the material properties, gravity, and boundary conditions, ensuring a stable starting point for further analysis. In this video, we explain the detailed procedure for the geostatic step with gravity load. First, we will save the CAE file and set the work directory. Now, we will create a soil block. It's a deformable 3D solid object. The dimensions are 1000 mm by 1000 mm by 1000 mm. Now, let's assign the material properties. We need to assign the density of the soil. In this example, we are assigning a density of 1,900 kg per cubic meter. This is equivalent to 1.9 times 10 to the power minus 9 tons per cubic millimeters. Now, we will assign the elastic properties of soil, such as modulus of elasticity and Poisson's ratio. In this example, we are assigning a modulus of elasticity of 5 MPa and a Poisson's ratio of 0.3. Now, we will assign the more Coulomb plasticity properties of soil, such as friction angle, dilation angle, and cohesion. In this example, we are assigning a friction angle of 45 degrees, dilation angle of 15 degrees. As the soil is sand, the cohesion is zero. However, for numerical stability, we are assigning a cohesion of 0.1 kPa. Now, let's create a homogeneous solid section for the soil. Now, let's assign the soil section to the geometry of the soil. Now, let's assembly the model. Now, the critical step. We are going to create the geostatic step. Now, let's create the gravity load. For a 3D model, gravity loads are applied by gravitational acceleration in the z-direction for the geostatic step. The gravitational acceleration is 9.81 meters per second squared. This is equivalent to the 9,810 millimeters per second squared.
Now, let's assign the boundary condition. Let's assume that the soil block is in a steel tank. Therefore, the bottom and the sides won't move in the direction perpendicular to the respective surfaces. As the soil density and the geometry are known, we can calculate the initial geostatic stresses. So now, let's assign the initial geostatic stresses as a predefined field. You can apply initial stresses if specific in situ stress conditions are known, which helps in avoiding excessive adjustments during the step. But this is optional. Now, let's do the meshing. In the context of meshing for finite element analysis, FEA, particularly in abacus, a hex-structured mesh, or hexahedral structured mesh, refers to a grid composed primarily of hexahedral, six-faced, elements that are organized in a structured, regular pattern. Hex-structured meshes are often preferred in FEA for their accuracy and computational efficiency, especially when modeling solid structures and materials. Now, let's create a job to run the finite element analysis. If there is no error in the model, it will take only one step for the geostatic step analysis.
Well done. You have successfully run the analysis. After completing a geostatic step analysis in Abacus, it's essential to verify several aspects to ensure that the initial stress state is accurate and that the model is stable before proceeding with further load steps. For a geostatic step, displacements should be minimal and close to zero, as this step is meant to establish initial stress without significant deformation. Large displacements may indicate issues with boundary conditions or overconstrained areas that need adjustment. Evaluate the vertical stress distribution, S33, within the model. It should increase with depth due to gravity, reflecting realistic geostatic stress. Compare this stress with expected values based on soil density and depth to validate correctness. Check the lateral stress distribution, S11 and S22, especially if a specific K-note value, the at-rest earth pressure coefficient, was applied. The ratio of horizontal to vertical stress should match the expected K-note value if accurately represented. Thank you for watching the video. Please subscribe to our channel, Proud to be a Civil Engineer, for more civil engineering and abacus-related videos.